There was once a merchant with many children. He was very wealthy, so wealthy, in fact, that he could afford whatever his children wished for him to give them. And they were very greedy. All except for one, that is, the youngest, whom they called Beauty, for she appreciated and preferred the simple beauties of life. While her siblings played with their toys, dressed lavishly, Beauty preferred to spend her days outside, in simple clothes, wandering the forests. One day, the merchant suffered a stroke of bad luck and lost all of his wealth. As a consequence, the entire family had to leave the city, where they had lived, to dwell in a little cabin in the woods. The merchant's wife and children detested such simple living, except, of course, for Beauty, who spent her days in the woods anyway. Word came that the merchant might have a chance to regain his wealth if he came back to the city, so he packed his things to set off. His children, hoping he would return as rich as they had once been, begged him to bring back all sorts of frivolous things. When the merchant asked Beauty what he should bring back for her, she wished only for him to return safely. He pressed her, and she admitted that she did miss the red roses of the city. And if he must bring back something for her, well then, just a single red rose. The merchant set off, and found upon his arrival in the city that he had been greatly deceived, and ended up leaving the city even more poor than when he arrived. As he returned homeward, a great snowstorm hit the region, and led him off his planned route. He was near the point of death when he came upon a path where the snow began to melt. Buds began to emerge, and warm weather seemed to approach. He continued, and came upon a great avenue of orange trees that led to a magnificent castle. He approached the castle and found it had no visible residence, so he entered. There were so many rooms inside, full of wondrous things, the merchant wondered that there was no one here to enjoy them. At the back of the castle was a room with a lit fire and a supper ready to be eaten. Seeing as there was no one he could see, the merchant assumed it was for him and devoured it immediately due to his great hunger. He continued and found a bedroom with fresh sheets, and again the merchant assumed he could lay down. Oh, he slept all through the night and woke well rested. He had decided that this castle must be meant for him and his children, that some good spirit had taken pity on him. So he gathered his things to return home that day and to bring his family back to the castle. He left the castle through the gardens, where his eye fell on a bush of red roses, and he remembered Beauty's request. Assuming that now the gardens were his as well, the merchant thought nothing of picking a single rose. What a grave mistake. No sooner had the flower been picked when there came from behind the merchant a fierce roar. When he turned, he beheld the most ugly creature he had ever seen in his life. Ungrateful man, it roared. Was it not enough that I allowed you in my palace, fed you at my table, and let you sleep in my bed? This is how you show your gratitude, by stealing my flowers? For this you shall pay with your life. The merchant threw himself on his knees and stumbled in fear over the words of his story of his bad luck, the journey, beauty's request. And remarkably, the great beast listened. You have a daughter, you say. Well, I am willing to pardon you if your daughter is willing to give her own life for your sake. How could I possibly consider such a thing? the merchant, I convince my favorite daughter to sacrifice her life for me? You need not convince her, for she must come of her own free will, responded the beast. Go home, bid farewell to your daughter, or bring her back in your place, however you decide. But you may keep the rose. The beast sent the merchant home, not only with beauty's rose, but with enough gold to restore the merchant to his prior wealth if that was truly what he was in want of. Upon his return, the merchant's family was overjoyed at first, now that they were wealthy again, but they could see the sadness on his face when he gave Beauty her rose, saying, My daughter, you know little what this has cost us. And he related the entire story of the castle and the beast. 
When he had finished, Beauty told her family, It is I who have caused this misfortune. It is I who must go and sacrifice myself to the beast. Despite her family's opposition, she stood firm, bid her family farewell, and set off with her father for the castle immediately. Upon their arrival, they found the castle much the way the merchant had found it originally, seemingly uninhabited, but certainly magical. Again, there was a room with a lit fire and a prepared supper, this time for two. They ate, hesitantly, and waited for the beast. When he arrived, they were both so surprised that he didn't hasten to eat Beauty right up there on the spot. Instead, he addressed Beauty almost politely. How have you come to this castle, my lady? My father wished to fetch me a rose from your garden, for which he later found he would have to pay with his life. But I am the one responsible, therefore I have come, and will pay the price for him. Do you come of your free will? Yes, I have come of my own free will. Very well, the beast turned to the merchant. You may take your leave, and be sure that you never see my castle again. Again, he sent the merchant off with enough gold to advance his wealth even further, despite the merchant's protest and insistence that Beauty return to her family and leave him to die at the hand of the beast. When the merchant was gone, the beast assured Beauty that all of her needs would be met right here in his palace, that he wished to make her very happy. With that, he showed her to her bedroom and left her for the evening. Beauty was very confused. She had assumed the beast had intended to eat her right up, but, but she was so exhausted from the entire ordeal, she fell into bed and right into a deep sleep. <laughs>